for the Jason E. Jones Show, wherever you are, whenever you are, whoever you are. Okay, let's get to it. I've got, I got Heath Schuler on today. Really blessed to have Heath on. Just one of the Tennessee legends. When you, when you mention Tennessee football, he's got to be in your top three, top five. Heath, welcome to the Jason E. Jones Show. Thank you so much for being on. Hey, Jason. Hey. Greatly appreciate you having me on the show. Absolutely. It is a a big-time pleasure, big-time pleasure. So let's get right to it. Uh, What does it mean to you to be a Tennessee Vol? You know, it's it's kind of amazing. Uh, I think in in my life, I've kind of, you know, kind of chalk up things that's happened in my life. Yeah. Kind of after my college days, you know, kind of what's gone on since then. And I can contribute so much of that 
uh, of being involved, whether mm-hmm. it be, you know, contacts, relationships, uh, work ethic, uh, you know, having the right mentors around me, both uh, at the University of Tennessee and in the community here in Knoxville. So, I mean, to me, the, the university and the athletic department there have have been able to provide me so much in my life moving forward outside the game of sports. You know, in the history of Tennessee football, Condridge Hallway, he's from Huntsville, Alabama. Peyton Manning from New Orleans. T. Martin is from Mobile, Alabama. On and on, Casey Clawson from from Southern California. Hennon Hooker from Greensboro, North Carolina. Josh Dobbs from Alpharetta, Georgia in the Atlanta area. You are... Basically, you could throw a rock and hit Gatlinburg from Bryson City. <laughs> yes, uh, the, the county share of the border of North and South, North Carolina and Tennessee. So it's uh, growing up, uh, both uh, TV stations, but primarily more of the radio stations, you was able to pick up, and that was the, the radio that you had. At that point in time, you know, it was WIVK 107. Point seven, and mm. and uh, that's the, the radio station that, that we got growing up, and so your cars were kind of set to that. You had a, a local AM station, you had that, and one Asheville station, and so you know that was kind of the you know the, the communication. So you got a lot was going on both on the campus here, but uh, kind of the East Tennessee region. You got to listen to John Ward, and for oh, the yes. for the younger people, they have no idea. And again, I got to talk to Bob the other day, Bob Kesslin. Bob Kesslin talked about just being himself. But for to grow up and listen to John Ward, it was just football time in Tennessee. And for him to be able to call, you know, six two Bryson City, North Carolina, hey Schuler. And I mean it was it was it was it was pretty special for him to be able to utter your name. Yeah, that's especially certainly when you go back and you're you're able to listen to uh, the commentating that that John did, and mm-hmm. you know some of the highlights that the university has put together over the years, and you know, you know certainly during that period of time, you knew what an icon he was, but then mm-hmm. even you know still today, the icon that still exists of John Ward and what he, you know how he created the excitement uh, over the radio to the to the fans who were listening. You know, kind of all over the world when it was being broadcast and ultimately went online. So, you know, John Ward's been, you know, he is uh, um, the the iconic figure that we look to. And, you know, I would say that, you know, Bob has done a great job of coming in. And if there's anybody to take his place, it certainly was uh, helped fill those shoes. It would be Bob Kesslein. And he's done a phenomenal job with it. So it's, you know, uh, it's, it's just, I think, the university and and the athletic department has done just a great job of putting the right people in the right places. Certainly, as a as a late, uh, um, it's it's certainly been a great um, change what's happened over the last you know three or four years. Yeah, absolutely. Now I've got to go back to let's see. You are a freshman on the sidelines against Notre Dame at Notre Dame, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, you traveled because you, I believe, it was you and Jerry Colquitt, right? Well, at the time, the starter was Andy Kelly. Well, I know. Yeah, senior, yeah, and, yeah. And Jerry and I also traveled. Uh, Jerry was my roommate uh, and just one of my best friends in the world. And just, you know, still we keep in such close contact today. And, you know, this upcoming game in Nashville, we're both going to be there. And so we've mm-hmm. already you know, made arrangements to meet up. And so, yeah, that was, it was, that was the three of us that, uh, uh, that traveled that game. I got to play receiver that game. Did you really? I did not know that. I did. Yeah. I think, I think four different snaps. uh, It was one of those, uh, you know, throwback type routes. I was going to play receiver. And I think Mm. my my freshman year, I played more snaps at tailback and receiver than I think I did at quarterback that year. Um, it was uh, a little bit different, but, uh, you know, any opportunity to play, I, I was ready for it. But uh, the, the defensive covers never gave us the opportunity to uh, to be able to, you know, kind of a double pass that we were right. that we had set up for Notre Dame at that time. What did they run? What were they running? 
Well, they was running press. Every time I got out there, they ended up pressing me, uh, which, you know, you can't run a double pass and, and press. So if the corner would have been off, I'd have been able to take one step, you know, forward like I was running the route. And then uh, back paddle, Andy throw me the pass, and then uh, um, the tailback was going to run out of the back of the the opposite side of the field, so it was a throwback all the way across the field. Okay, gotcha. Uh, to, to a tailback, so hopefully it's kind of a which know, would have been Aaron route. Hayden, right? Yeah, the, Aaron Hayden or Little Man Stewart. Little Man Stewart two yeah. at that time. That was the two guys. Uh, both had tremendous seasons that year as true freshmen, and uh, you know, you look at what they were able to accomplish it was just phenomenal. In that particular game, Aaron Hayden had a had really kind of lights out. I mean, he rushed over 100 yards, a couple of touchdowns that game. So, you know, it was kind of his debut and coming out party. Okay, biggest win. I got to say, now, I'm from my perspective, my brother was playing at Cumberland University in Lebanon, and I, I want to say, yeah, it was Tusculum. We were coming back through, and we had just beaten Florida, and I'm telling you, the, the even the interstate was ravenous. I mean, it was <laughs> wild. Oh, man, it was wild. Yeah, that was a great game. That was the rainstorm that's uh, so noted. I mean, it didn't matter who had the football. It was a torrential downpour. And, yeah. You know, you, you, you could barely make out one sideline to the other at times when it was raining so hard. But uh, no lightning, but just a lot of rain. And we stayed on the field, and the water coolers were floating on the sidelines. <laughs> the players were having to stand up on the bench itself because the um, – the catch basins and the drainage in that stadium, particularly, it wasn't able to handle that much water coming in all at one time. It looked like a river coming there, a waterfall coming down the, the, the bleachers. But the great thing is, I don't think a single person in that stadium left oh, uh, because the wild. game was just yeah. so incredible. And you know, at, at one at some point, you just decide, to, you know, the ponchos come off because you're sorry, so uh, so drenched that they all stayed and. You know, it was one of those games that was raining so hard, we actually only threw the ball eight times. Yeah. I think I completed seven of eight times for a touchdown and had a couple of running touchdowns. We ran the option a lot that day. Yeah. Uh, but that was just, you know, it was because we had the best offensive line. We won the trenches that day and got the guys and the tailbacks did a great job and the receivers did a great job blocking you know, out on the perimeter. And so you know, that gave us the opportunity to really put the game away uh, once we scored the uh, – really that last time to put the game away and, you, um, and then the rest was history you didn't have to worry about the clock because Mo, most phillips had the time <laughs> yeah yeah the funny thing is a lot of people didn't realize what that was for is he had he had made a couple different runs and either got tackle on the one yard or inside the five and so he was waiting for that you know to get that score and so it was it's about time is what he was referring to. When okay. He kind of looked at the watch. Yeah, he, <laughs> he had gotten close multiple times and just didn't get the chance to punch it in. So it was kind of, it was about time. And it was, that was a, uh, um, a little pass we threw out of the backfield. He just took it the distance. What's great in Tennessee history is so many great plays have happened in the rain and some bad plays against Florida. Yeah. But another is where uh, Reggie Cobb, Reggie Cobb runs seventy nine yards against Auburn, and you might have right. been you might have been there as a were you there as an official visit? I wasn't, as, I wasn't as a recruit that game. The, the game that I came, uh, which was uh, um, was not that game, but okay. uh, I got to come to a couple of those games that year. And you know, growing up as a kid, it was a little more challenging. Uh, to kind of just come over on the whim yeah. on a game day it was kind of more your – you got to usually make one game a season. And, you know, I was I went to Florida, went to Miami, went to Notre Dame. Yeah. Uh, I went to Alabama, went to Chapel Hill, you know, to kind of give a little hello to our in-state guys. And ironically enough, uh, went down to uh, South Carolina, which was, you know, relatively close to home. Yeah. Uh, a few hours from home. So, you know, you'd kind of make your rounds, you know, throughout the – and then narrow it down to those four or five schools that you want to take a visual visit to, and which we did. And so, I mean, you took a lot of, you know, a lot of your time because oftentimes those official visits were either, you know, uh, in January because the commitment dates was was really not like it is today. The yeah. recruiting has certainly changed oh, yeah. uh, 
over the years and, and, you know, social media and just, you know, the exposure that these kids get, get is just so wonderful. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's burdensome. I've uh, had the pleasure of, of coaching and, um, and at Christ school in Asheville and, uh, over a three year time period, we spent, we sent 13 players to division one. So, you know, wow. I watched how challenging it was and they were moving in a thousand different directions on the weekends. And, yeah. and um, you know, sometimes it was stressful, but you, it was always good. I was telling them, Hey, do you think you know where you're going to go? Go ahead and commit because it kind of takes that burden off yourself and, and you could just really tell the, you know, uh, sigh of relief oftentimes on those kids that already committed and, and certainly going in their senior year, most yeah. all of them had already committed where they were going and ended up, you know, having a very successful senior year. It came down to Tennessee, Alabama, which at the time was, was Alabama. It had been a few years since they had won a national championship, but it was still Alabama. Then North Carolina, which is five hours away from where you're from, so the closest. I was closer to Alabama than I was Chapel Hill. Yeah, uh, growing up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, from our area, I think we're closer to seven state capitals than we are our own capital in Raleigh. How how close? Yeah, I'm. We're just doing an interview here. I'm just trying to get in your head. What? How close was it, or did Phil Fulmer? As the OC at the time, the offense coordinator, he just pretty much you were you were sold on Tennessee. Well, I really was. I mean, I, I was I was sold that it was going. It was down between the two of them. I had a, a tremendous amount of respect for um, David Cutcliffe was my my coach, obviously, yeah. I mean, that recruiting coach at the time, and yeah. he was going to be he was the quarterbacks coach. Had a lot of conversation with him and Coach Former Johnny Majors did the home visit. Um, it was a. Uh, it was incredible, but I came back from the Alabama visit um, and almost decided not to go to the to the uh, my official visit to Tennessee, and and um, I thought maybe that was the right place for me to go. I mean, I, I had a tremendous amount of respect for Woody McCorvey, who was the uh, running backs coach there, and he was my recruiting coach. But also, you know, um, Gene Stalin, just what an incredible. Uh, human being he was and yeah. it was a great visit I mean everything you you know the players were great um, you know just kind of uh, felt at home uh, a little sense and uh, and then but I said no I'm, I'm still going to go to Tennessee and, and I am very grateful that I continued and, and went to that visit because talking about being at home everything about it felt perfect yeah and um and really excited about it. My parents, and, and plus, my dad was a mailman growing up, so uh, he had to work every almost every other Saturday. Yeah. And so this gave him an opportunity that, uh, uh, you know, they could come over, watch a game, and they could head back home and, you know, didn't have to worry about that extra expense and, you know, putting a burden on my uh, on our family. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that it's amazing how so many different Things could have changed in college football history. Tim Tebow goes to, and again, I'm all of all, but I'm a I'm a football fan. Tim Tebow almost did what you did and went to Alabama. I mean, he he sat there, he sat there and prayed about it, and he almost went to Alabama. And it's just yeah. funny how how all these things kind of change. Jamal Lewis wasn't even recruited as a running back is a travesty by Georgia. They had Jasper Sanks at the time. So it, it's just crazy how how just a decision just changes everything. Yeah, and I think it's important for all of the, you know, those recruits, and I would tell them when I, when I was coaching them in high school, like, look, guys, go to as many visits you can. You never know yeah. what what you find out. And so, True. you know, those are, those official visits are very important to the whole process and spending some time with the coaches and, you know, ask the right players to to, to the current players, right? Ask the right questions. And yeah. so you, you'll, get a, you'll get a lot of information that can be able to help provide you the, the necessary um, um, uh, information to be able to make the, the best decision possible. Yeah. We're talking with Heath Schuller, runner-up to the Heisman 1993, one of, one of uh, Tennessee legends, 1993 SEC Player of the Year. Heath, you go down with Herschel Walker 
Emmett Smith, Jay Barker from Alabama. I mean, on and on. Danny Werfel, on and on and on. As in in stone, you are connected to all those different players. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. You you know, getting either to play against those you know at the next level or having Danny Werfel as a teammate. I mean, it just uh, you know the the SEC means a lot. You yeah. know and. You know, people say, oh, I can't pull for a certain team if they're playing, you know, uh, whoever they play against. I, I, I pull for the SEC. You know, yeah. if they, I don't care who they're playing. If they're an SEC team, that's who I pull for. And, um, you know, it's 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 pretty exciting to see how this conference is going to continue to expand over the next few years and, yeah. and what it ultimately ends up being like. So uh, I think the SEC has a very bright future. All right, so I got you on here. I asked you before I brought you on here if this was okay. I want to play devil's advocate. You you decide to stay at Tennessee for your senior year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, you've done a lot of interviews, but has anybody ever thrown that one at you? Yeah, yeah, and it, it's it's not been until until recently that you know after having a conversation with my father, you yeah. know, if it was okay to have this conversation. So yeah. most people didn't realize the reason why I did leave. Yeah. Um. So at that particular time, uh, I want to be able to protect our investment, you know, an investment. So yeah, you know, the Lloyd's of London, you know, for injuries, uh, was around twenty thousand dollars per million. Yeah. And so you know, I would have had to, my my parents would have had to have put a second mortgage on their home, you know? And so we just didn't have that money growing up. My mom, she ran the the youth program uh, back in my hometown and spent over 20 years, you know, in that program as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. Uh, My dad was a mailman and, you know, we, he worked extremely hard and, you know, I never wanted to put my parents in that situation. I had every, you know, every, uh, you know, reason to stay. My brother was there. My girlfriend, who ultimately became my wife, was in school mm-hmm. at Tennessee. So, you know, I had every reason. I mean, the football program was at the very top of its time. We had a, you know, I think a really good chance to win the national championship and and yeah. SEC championship, national championship, and, and really put ourselves in a really good situation. You know, you know, but I look, you know, went through that process. I really felt like I could not put my my parents in yeah. that situation. No, absolutely, and so, yeah. And you know, with NIL, I mean, there's some things about the NIL that I really wish would be adjusted, uh, but mm-hmm. I think it does give an opportunity for uh, these players to, I'm, I'm hoping they're spending it on, you know, the insurance policies uh-huh. uh, and staying in school and doing yeah. those kind of things, because I really would like to have stayed in school um, yeah. as opposed to have gone, but uh it would have been great to see what would have happened. So I've I've got you coming back to Tennessee, and you're playing with your brother Benji. You are mentoring a young Peyton Manning. Mm-hmm. I love this, by the way. Um, <laughs> you you got to love sports, right? You've got Joey Kent, Andy McCullough, Billy Williams, Marcus Nash, on and on. And don't forget about the past where with uh, Faulkner, Corey Fleming, uh, yeah. On and on, Henry. Jones, yeah. Davis. Uh, oh yeah. But uh, I mean, it, it's it's cool to to dream. Then you go into the first game of the year against UCLA, and you just torched the West Coast Bruins. And I mean, just yeah, it it, it, it that's the great thing about sports is yes. what if or life. What if what if I yep. would have done this. What if I oh, what if yeah. I didn't do that? But it is kind of fun to look at it and say. And, and I, don't worry, I've I've done my research. I got your wide receivers here, your running backs. <laughs> and by the way, got have had Charlie Garner on. Want to have him on again? Charlie Garner, James Stewart, Aaron Hayden, Mose Phillips. I mean, just on and on. So much talent that yeah. you played with. Yeah, an incredible group. And, you know, I think the amazing thing there is I felt like I was kind of leaving the university in incredible hands with Jerry Colquitt. Yeah. Jerry would have been a fifth-year senior, yeah. you know, really deserved. I mean, you know, we competed my sophomore year, his redshirt sophomore year, yeah. and, and we really competed for the job. We were roommates, and, you know, I – Jerry could do everything and more. Yeah. And so, you know, it kind of felt like I wasn't leaving it with that freshman. You know, they had uh, uh, Manning and uh, uh, Stewart. Yeah, uh, and Todd. And so, 
Yeah, and so, and, and Todd, you know, Todd's one of those guys. I mean, he was as, as good an athlete you'd ever see around. But you I mean, ain't kidding. we all knew Todd was going to be a Major League Baseball player. And he was going to, you know, hopefully right. this year he gets his induction into the Hall of Fame. Um, but, I mean, it was one of those things that Todd was there for the backup and was never going to get you beat in a game, go out there and make all the right decisions. But yeah. it probably wasn't in Todd's best interest to, to – to, you know, be a starter yeah. in the SEC. So yeah. having having those, you know, four guys, you know, kind of to, to leave it with felt, you know, felt the, like the, they were in good hands. And then unfortunately, the yeah. first series of the game, Jerry goes down and blows out his knee. And, and then um, Todd gets uh, dinged up. And then, and then the two freshmen came in and Brandon Stewart came in and Peyton Manning came in and yeah. they kind of went back and forth. And, and ultimately, you know, um, Peyton actually won that, uh, won the uh, the nod that year, and so you know set all the records here. Over he the he did pretty years. good, that Peyton guy. He did all right. Yeah, he ended up pretty good. Yeah, he ended up pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> sure did. Did you act- aggravate him all the time? I told him I said, "Now Peyton it took you four years to break the records. It only took me two. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. This but, is, but yeah, this, yeah, but I think he set those standards so high that uh, it wasn't until last year when Hendon took a lot of the single season passing records. But it was, uh, yeah. um, you know, the game has changed. I mean, if you look at uh, the history of, you know, from uh, in the quarterback position, I mean, you know, all the records are there to be broken. And I'm, you know, my son broke all of the North Carolina records, uh, West North Carolina records, mm-hmm. uh, single season and career. And, and he told me, he says, Dad, it took you uh, 15 games to set the record, and I only did it in 10. So uh, you know, they're always there to be broken. So I'm always excited when, you know, I congratulated Hendon on the uh, the most consecutive games with yep. a touchdown pass. And uh, so all of my uh, – my records will continue to fade away, just like every record in the record book will continue to fade away the way the game is being played today. Well, I grew up a Dan Marino fan, and I hate to see all his records have been passed, but what he did is a legacy. I'll get back to that. I want to get your influence as a quarterback before we finish up here. But, yeah, another North Carolina product out of Greensboro, North Carolina, Hendon Hooker, what yes. what an exceptional exceptional human being, exceptional athlete. Just, I, I you, what can you say about him and, and and what he what he's done? And I love the way the quarterback room because you've been in quarterback rooms, NFL and college. That can get probably a little dicey and spicy in there. And the fact that Joe Milton and Hendon became friends and and worked together and and learned and and competed like you and Jerry Colquitt. It's, it just, it's a testament to both those young men. Well, I think it goes a long ways. I mean, you know, Jerry was an incredible, uh, you know, teammate, but he was even a better friend. And I'll never forget, um, you know, he would help me. You know, I was, you know, just new into the system, and he did everything he would to help me and pull me off to the side. He had been in the system for a year, and, yeah. and so he would, you know, he really mentored me. He really did, and and it wasn't too long ago that he and I were having dinner together, and I said, Jerry, I, I said, I know I probably thanked you back then, but I just want you to know how sincere I am of of and how grateful I am to have you as a friend because you could have you could have chosen to just be quiet and not say nothing and help me out and not help me out and you know, let me kind of do my own thing and just compete against one another. But you were the ultimate teammate and you were the mm-hmm. ultimate friend and, and you wanted the, our team to be better. And, and you helped me through that process. Even when we were competing with a job, he would say, Hey, let me show you an easier way to think through this process. And, and, uh, and he did everything. And I think that's what you saw with, with Hendon and Joe. And I think it's given Joe that perspective and, you know, he was a starter, and then Hendon came in, and Hendon took it for the rest of the year. And so, I mean, it was uh, then the following. So it was a it was a year of maturity and learning for Joe. Yeah. And they maintained that relationship and friendship. And so, when that happens, I think what you'll ultimately end up seeing is you'll you'll see a um, you'll see a very productive um, uh, 
very intelligent decision making process by Joe because he's able to see that and he's been you know they helped one another out and one of the things that you know people want to talk about how strong Joe is and his, his arm strength is and you know his physical appearance but but Joe does an incredible job in the film room yeah. you know uh, my son's there with Joe in that film room and that quarterback room and he's like he said Joe is a, a really a, a a student of the game and spends that extra time in the film room and does what it takes in order to be a starter in the SEC and so and that's where Joe has really separated himself this offseason is just his continued growth in the system and the program. I would get into your son, but we have a limited amount of time here, and I know just how special that is having him wear your number at Tennessee. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Coach uh, Coach Heupel was handing out jerseys and threw, threw him through my son Navy, uh, the 21 jersey. He goes, he said, wear it proud. And he said, uh, and so that was kind of cool uh, that he was able to wear that same jersey. Uh, he wore it in, uh, you know, um, in youth ball, but uh, got in high school, chose his own jersey number, and, and uh, but ultimately ended up coming here and wore, wearing the same one that I do. So 21's an odd number, but, uh, you know, it was just, you know, it's great to see him be a part of that program. And now my daughter is actually on the dance team. So oh, that's I awesome. have two people on the field at the same time. So this, uh, my daughter's the first female Shuler, but, uh, but this is actually, she is the seventh Shuler uh, okay. in the athletic program at the university of Tennessee. And my, I've got a cousin, uh, out of North Carolina, Zoe Shuler, who is a softball player, number one softball player in North Carolina, who's committed to to Tennessee. So she will make number eight. I think that uh, that's awesome. I think we've all, we doubled the the number of any other family ever in Tennessee history to play and be a part of the athletic program. That is beautiful, right there. That is awesome. Okay, to finish up, I know I'm, I got to get you out of here, and I definitely appreciate your time. And I think we've we've. I've, I've learned some stuff and the, the listening audience is going to learn some stuff that we didn't know two, three, three things to wrap it up. A Johnny major story, a Johnny major story. You know, I, I think the best Johnny major story is that Johnny actually wanted to, to, and he was sincere about it. He wanted to go back to the wing T at one point in time. <laughs> uh, we were, uh, he wanted to put a system in yeah, okay. uh, as the wing T because I was a running quarterback and yeah, I was that a makes freshman. Sense. And, yeah. and he wanted to, to kind of put a new wrinkle in. So we practiced it multiple times at practice and kind of, you know, but, you know, the whole crisscrossing in the backfield in this direction, things like that, it become a little bit more challenging. But, mm-hmm. but, uh, he wanted to, to put that wrinkle in. So that's one story. But probably the greatest story is is uh, when I was in Congress, um, Johnny was big into politics. He loved politics. And I'll never forget him calling me. And, and I thought he was just calling me out of the blue to say hello and say, oh, I'm doing It's like, hey, how are you going to vote? I want to know how you're going to vote today. And it was kind of funny. It was a, a controversial bill and how I was going to vote. And, and it was kind of funny to, to <laughs> think that I think he enjoyed politics probably more than he co- than he did coaching football. But, yeah. I mean, he would call me. We would talk, uh, you know, hours about politics. And uh, and it was it was kind of funny to to listen to him and kind of see a different perspective because I never got that while as a player right. how much he loved politics. Well, he was cut from the fabric of General Nealon and he believed he was. from everything I've heard, he believed that coaches and players there needs to be there needs to be a, a, a middle ground there needs to be some space there. So yes. Uh, with that bullhorn of his, I've I've heard some great <laughs> stories. I've heard some great stories. Yeah, there's some great ones out there. Uh, so. At the swamp, and then finish it up with what it was like to play Alabama, and that. Oh man, I know you're a player. A tie. That tie. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> David Palmer. Yeah, I mean, that was a tough game. I mean, we, um, you know, I, I had a second degree separation on my shoulder. Yeah. Um. Uh, it happened in the first half, and so we didn't throw the ball in the second half. Yeah. And um, I'd seen something online recently that said that, you know, we didn't complete a pass. Well, the reason we didn't complete a pass in the second half, we never threw the ball in the second half. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> it, it was, we never even made a passing attempt in the second half. So 
you know, we ran the football and, and tried to do the things that was necessary to keep us uh, in the game. And, and But unfortunately, you know, we uh, – we wanted to keep the ball out of David Palmer's hands. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they lined it up in a wildcat formation. Yeah. He was a quarterback and uh, he was just a, you know, student body right all the way around the right side. And, you know, they were able to, you know, he sc- they sc- scored and, and, you know, they were celebrating the time. We were kind of saddened by the, the tie game. And, yeah. and then you said that the swamp, the tough place to play, that was the hardest place for me to play in college. It wasn't Alabama. It wasn't LSU. I mean, we played LSU down in Baton Rouge at night and everybody talked about it and we just come out and just punched them right in the mouth early and it was a quiet stadium from that point on and yeah but that Florida stadium a, was a tough place you know that seems like the fans are right on top of you they throw yeah. things at you it was kind of a it was a it's a tough atmosphere and but that's what you expect when you go in the SEC and that's a, it's a fun place to play and you want to you know the good thing is there is you, if you can go there and come away with a victory it makes it all worthwhile well talking about the rain that game, I want to say it was was it forty two thirty four some I want yeah something. we couldn't stop them they couldn't stop us we get the ball last and it started raining yeah <laughs> and we had eighty yards to go a tip ball for an interception so yeah. it ended up being a uh, it was a tough you know a tough way to go out I was there in seventeen and it it was just after a hurricane and. I got to tell you, I couldn't imagine playing on that field. It was so hot. Yeah. Yeah, it was tough. We actually lost um, um, Corey Fleming. Uh, he, he, had, uh, he was sick before the game. And so, you know, my brother was a true freshman. And so he, my brother came in and started, and he and Joey Kent kind of alternated back and forth. And I looked down, they were both friends. I looked down and said, guys – you guys must be the best decoys you can be today. Uh, Billy Williams had an incredible game. Yes, that he day. did. I think Billy, Billy caught three or four touchdown passes. We threw five that day, but we just couldn't. We couldn't. Uh, you know, we couldn't make that final drive when it counted. Uh, ball got wet. You know, tough for the receivers to make some of those catches, and and we just, you know, um, Danny, uh, I think they just ended up doing just an incredible job, and you know, they scored when it counted. Well, there's, certainly when they got the ball back. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, so yeah, every yeah. Every time they got the ball, it stopped raining. Man, so. I yeah, yeah. I've talked to a few players that played at the swamp, and yeah, it's it, it's a different kind of place. But hopefully this year, Heath, we can we can finally get that that monkey off our back. So absolutely. Well, yep, it's going to be a fun fun game, Heath. I appreciate your time. I want to respect yes, your time. Jason, thank you. Because down the road. I'd love to have you maybe on here and there. I, I know that would probably be probably be tough. That but would be fun. Having you having you, you just on, let me know. yeah, it means it means a lot. And to hear stories and to hear that, especially about the Lloyds of London, I don't know how many people know that, but that's that's that really does make sense with a blue collar family and and working hard and and you're you're thinking your family first and. And I'll tell you right now, and a lot of us do it too, is the people want to, after Tennessee, what what happened, and separation of your shoulder, if that doesn't happen, who knows what happens with Washington, the Redskins, but we always stand up for you, and you're you're one of us. So. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on the show, and go Vols. Absolutely. If you don't mind, hang on one second. I'm going to sign off, Heath. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the Jason E. Jones Show. Heath Shuler, what a great interview. I hope I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. If you didn't, that's fine. I enjoyed it. Have a great day. Check out all the episodes and go USA.
through the night. 